Praise the Lord. This is the true worshiper of God. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Amen. I hope you guys are ready for this message. You've seen the title, Snakes in the Camp. Snakes in the Camp, a hard lesson of faith. That's right, brothers and sisters. I want to, I want to talk to you about when we were brought out by the power of God out of Egypt from the place of slavery. Amen. And I want you to know, I don't know if anyone has ever told you, but when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, out of that house of bondage, he took them on a walk of faith. That's right. This was a faith walk. Can I get an amen? As you recall, when it was time for them to get to the other side of the Red Sea, the Bible says it is written in the word of God that the waters parted, that God parted the waters and they were hundreds of feet in the air, thousands of feet in the air on each side. And the seabed was dry. And in order for them to get to the other side and away from the enemy, they had to walk by faith, amen, through the Red Sea. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, I got a message for you about faith, but this is a hard lesson of faith. And it's hard for those who dishonor, who do, who do not trust God, who dishonor God, who disrespect God, it's a hard lesson for those. Amen. So the title of this message is Snakes in the Camp, A Hard Lesson of Faith. People of God, in Genesis chapter 15, starting at the 13th verse, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. The Lord said to Abraham, you can be sure that your descendants will be strangers in a foreign land where they will be oppressed as slaves for 400 years. I want you to know today, 600,000 men were rescued from Egypt by the hand of God being led by Moses out of the place of slavery from Egypt, that was 600,000 men plus women and children. So all these people that are in Egypt, all these Israelites that are in Egypt are descendants of Abraham. These are children of Abraham, okay? These are the descendants. And I want you to know, you're going to find out that you, if you don't already know this, but you are a descendant of Abraham. Now remember, this is a faith walk. This is a faith walk in 2024 that we have to live. We have to walk by faith. That means we have to live by faith. And what God was doing with the children of Israel was he was bringing them out of bondage, out of slavery, out of Egypt, and teaching them how to live by faith all at the same time. When God sent Moses to tell Pharaoh to let God's people go, it was Abraham's descendants, amen, 
that were in Egypt as slaves that God sent Moses, amen, to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Galatians chapter 3 verse 7 reads, the real children of Abraham, amen, the real descendants of Abraham are those who put their faith in God. Amen. So children of God in 2024, that means you. Amen. If you have your faith in Christ Jesus, you are a true, amen, descendant of Abraham. Now, this is a faith thing. Galatians 3, 29 says, Now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. What are descendants? Descendants are children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Right? That's what descendants are. But we who belong to Jesus, we are the true children, the true descendants, says the word, and heirs to God's promise to Abraham. That's right. We are the true children of Abraham and the promises that God made with Abraham belongs to us. Okay? Stay with me. In Exodus chapter 20, second verse, we are commanded to remember what's written in the commandments of God. Where it says, I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. When he says, I am the Lord your God, God is saying, I am the ruler of your entire life. Mm hmm. The title of this message is Snakes in the Camp, A Hard Lesson of Faith. So first, I got to make sure that we all are on the same page, that we are descendants of Abraham, and it was us that God brought out of Egypt from a place of slavery. And you're probably saying, but I wasn't, I wasn't there. That happened thousands of years ago. How could I say that I was brought out of Egypt by the hand of God? How could I say that God rescued me in 2024? How can I say this in 2024 that God rescued me from Egypt, the place of slavery? I'm going to show you how. People of God, you have to believe by faith that it was you that was rescued from the land of Egypt, the place of slavery. Well, how do I do that, true worshiper? It's not something you do, it's something you believe. Come with me to Romans chapter 6 to the fourth verse. I'm going to show you how to do this. Now watch this. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, now watch this, this is Romans chapter 6, I'm going to be reading from verses 4 to 8, New Living Translation. Verse 5 says, since we have been, been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our, our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. Now, how many of you were crucified 
with Christ. Well, you're saying, no, Christ was on that cross by himself. But see, this is what God is trying to tell you. And he's still teaching us today how to live by faith. You have to believe that you were crucified with Christ, that you died with Christ. You have to believe that. And you also have to believe that you were buried with him. By baptism, you are buried with him and that when he rose, you rose with him. Now, how do we do this? We do all this by faith. What is faith? Belief, believing. That's what faith is. We're believing. We're believing that this was done. So when it comes to being a descendant of Abraham, and being rescued out of Egypt from a place of slavery. That's why I'm telling you, you have to believe that you were there and you were being rescued. You have to believe that you were on the cross with Christ, amen, and that you died with Christ and that sin has no, no longer has power over you, that you were buried with Christ and that you rose with him in victory. That's faith. That's what you have to believe. So in order for you to understand this message today, I want you to know that you are a descendant of Abraham. And that what it says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, what's written when the Lord says, I am the Lord, your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of slavery, you need to believe that. You need to know that. This is why people are still struggling with sin. Can't get the victory because you're not living by faith. But God has a hard lesson for those who refuse to trust and believe him. Watch this. Two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived at Mount Sinai in the wilderness where God revealed himself to Moses. Two months after they had left Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, and before they got to the mountain, to the wilderness, the, to Mount Sinai, in the wilderness, they had failed in their faith before they even got there. They kept saying, oh, we should have stayed in Egypt. Now what are we going to do? We have nothing to drink. We have no water. We have no water to drink. We have no food to eat. Oh, they just brought us out here to die. In Egypt, we had plenty of food, this, that, and the third. We had buckets of meat. But God brought them out of a place of oppression with power. They were led by a whirlwind of fire at night and a, and a pillar, of a, pillar of fire at night and a pillar of a cloud by day. They were protected. Didn't the Bible say for 40 years they wandered and their shoes weren't even worn out? God, for 40 years, God fed them, gave them water to drink, and took care of them. Protected them from the enemy. And while God was doing all of this, they were dishonoring God, disrespecting God. As soon as they got across the Red Sea, they built a golden calf and, and, and began to worship it and called it God and said that this calf is the one that rescued them. When, Mount, when, when Moses went up to the, to the mountain to be with God, this is what they did while they were at the bottom of the mountain. They didn't give God praise. They gave all that praise, honor, and worship to a golden statue that they had built themselves. A lack of faith. They just kept dishonoring and disrespecting God. 
and God kept forgiving them. He didn't even have to. He could have disowned them and destroyed them immediately. Two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived at Mount Sinai in the wilderness where God revealed himself to Moses so he can instruct them how to live as people of God. Now God got them in the place where he's going to instruct them and show them how to live as people of God. He's going to show them how to live as children of God. From the time they were leaving Egypt to crossing the Red Sea on dry land, God was teaching us how to walk by faith. And during this journey from slavery to the promise of God and the love of God, the Israelites showed no trust in God, no faith in God, and would speak against God and his servant Moses. God took the people to the borders of the promised land a land flowing with milk and honey. God sent 12 men, a man from each tribe, to go into the promised land for 40 days to explore it, find out what the food is like, what the fruit is like, the vegetation, what the land is like. Amen? The people that's on the land, find out, What's going on with them too? But they're going in as spies, these 12 men that God sent into the promised land to scout it out. Amen. For 40 days to see what the Lord, the land was like. When the 12 men returned, Joshua and Caleb gave a good report. They gave a good report about the land. They said that the that that the grapes were the size of watermelon. That it was a good, prosperous place for us to live. Come on, let's go in and overtake the land. Yeah, there were people in the land, the Canaanites, the Amalekites, the Amorites, so forth, the Jebusites, so forth and so on, right? And Caleb and Joshua knew that they could overtake the land and drive those people off the land because God has given them the giving given the land to them and God is with them that the people that are on that land they don't have no protection from God so the victory is ours this is the report that Caleb and Joshua brought back to Moses in front of all the Israelites. Mm. But the other 10 men that were along with Joshua and Caleb scouting out the land, they gave a bad report. Yes. They said the land does flow with milk and honey, but the people who live there are powerful. Uh Uh-huh. They are powerful. Wow. Their towns are fortified, large and fortified. We even saw giants there. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. This bad report that the other 10 spies that scouted out the land along with Joshua and Caleb, that report caused the whole community of Israel to not want to go into the land. They didn't want to go into the land. They didn't believe that God would protect them. Matter of fact, they said some things. Caleb and Joshua tried to calm the people down because now the people are pissed off. 
Yeah. They're upset. They're angry. That they cannot go into this land. Because the people in the land, land they, they are believing, are stronger than them. So in, in, in Numbers chapter 13, this is what they say. But Caleb tried to quiet the people. Verse 30. Numbers chapter 13, verse 30. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were huge. We even saw giants there. The descendants of Anak. Next to them we felt like grasshoppers and that's what they thought too. Numbers chapter 14, verses 1, 1 through 4. Look at this. Then the whole community began weeping aloud, and they cried all night. Their voices rose in a great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in Egypt or even here in the wilderness. They complained, why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Then they plotted among themselves. Let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Hmm. This is what the bad report did. Mm, mm, mm. But the whole community began to, verse 10, Numbers chapter 13, 14, Numbers 14, Look at verse 10. But the whole community began to talk about stoning Joshua and Caleb. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to all the Israelites at the tabernacle. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? Will they never believe me? Even after all the miraculous signs I have done among them, I will disown them and destroy them with the plague. Then I will make you into a nation greater and mightier, mightier than they are. But Moses interceded. Moses interceded for the people and he begged God not to disown or destroy the people. Look at Numbers chapter 14. Look at verse 20. This is what the Lord says. Hallelujah. The Lord says this. I will pardon them as you have requested. But as surely as I live and as surely as the earth is filled with the Lord's glory, not one of these people will ever enter that land. They have all seen my glorious presence and the miraculous signs I performed both in Egypt and in the wilderness. But again and again, they have tested me by refusing to listen to my voice. They will never even see the land I swore to give their ancestors. None of those who have treated me with contempt will ever see it. But my servant Caleb has a different attitude than the others have. He has remained loyal to me, so I will bring him into the land he explored. His descendants will possess their full share of that land. Now turn around and don't go on toward the land where the Amalekites and Canaanites live. Tomorrow you must set out for the wilderness in direction of the Red Sea. Ah, you see... When the people refuse to obey God and go into the land, when they refuse to trust God, after all that God had done for them, God has showed them his power, that he is their God and they are his people. And still, they dishonor God, disrespect God, speak against God, and, and say things like, we would rather be in Egypt. Why would he bring us out here into this land to die? That's right. 
They believed that God could not protect them from the giants in the land. And as a result of this unbelief, God sent them into the wilderness to wander for 40 years until that generation died out. Oh, yes, he did. Mm. I want to show you something. Yes, he did. Look at Numbers chapter 14. Look at verse 34. 31, I'm sorry. Now, I tell you what. We're going to start at verse 28. Numbers chapter 14, look at verse 28. Because I'm about to get to the snakes. Watch this. Verse 28. Numbers chapter 14. Now tell them this, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. God heard them say that our wives and our little ones are going to be killed. They're going to be plundered by these giants in that land. God heard them say that anybody that goes in that land will be devoured by those people over there. So then God says, now tell them this, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. Verse 29, you will all drop dead in this wilderness. Because you complained against me, every one of you who is 20 years, 20 years old or older and was included in the registration will die. You will not enter and occupy the land I swore to give to you. The only exceptions will be Caleb, son of Jephne, and Joshua, son of Nun. You said your children will be carried off as plunder? Well, I will bring them safely into the land. Anybody that's 20 years or older, 20 years old or older, God's going to make them wonder for 40 years in the wilderness. They will never enter the land the promised land. He's going to make them wander for 40 years in the wilderness till they drop dead. They're going to die in the wilderness. They're not going to die in his promise. It's a hard lesson of faith. This is what happens. Ooh. But as for you, you will drop dead in this wilderness and your children will be like a shepherd wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. In this way, they will pay for your faith, faithlessness until the last of you lies dead in the wilderness. Their children had to pay for their lack of faith, for their faithlessness. Their children had to wander around in this wilderness like they were shepherds. No rest for 40 years until all those people who refuse to obey God and live and walk by faith died. Because your men explored the land for 40 days, you must wander in the wilderness for 40 years. A year for each day suffering the consequences of your sins, then you will discover what, is, what, it, what it is like to have me for an enemy. See, brothers and sisters, when, when we don't live by faith, I don't know if anybody told you, but I'm going to tell you right now, when you do not walk by faith, when you do not live by faith, you are making God your enemy. And you're going to know what it's like to have God for an enemy because you refuse to live by faith. Come on. I know it's a hard lesson. I told you. This is a hard lesson. This is a hard lesson of faith. Amen. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will certainly do these things to every member of the community who has conspired against me. They will be destroyed here in this wilderness, and here they will die. The ten men 
Moses had sent to explore the land, the ones who incited rebellion against the Lord with their bad report were struck dead. They were struck dead with a plague before the Lord. Of the 12 who had explored the land, only Joshua and Caleb remained alive. Oh, mighty God. Oh, mighty God. Mm. Look at um, Numbers chapter 21. I want you to see how the people, even though God had them walking for 40 years, told them they could not enter the promised land. Amen. Look at Numbers chapter 21. Come with me. Now, so far, the children of Israel, they keep failing the faith test. They, for some reason, no matter what God does and they see the power of God, the miraculous signs. Every time they're faced with a problem, their faith fails. And then they want to kill Moses. Then they want to go back to Egypt. They start complaining against God. Why did he bring us out here? We told them we didn't want to go. Should have left us in Egypt to die. Look at Numbers chapter 21. Now, now God is fed up. He's already told them you're not going in the land. 20 years old and older, you're not going in. Your children will go in. But what's going to happen? Everybody's going to suffer for 40 years in this wilderness until the last of you die in this wilderness. The last of you who were dishonoring me. Just see me tell you something. When you don't have faith in God, when you don't trust God, that is the worst thing you can do. You are dishonoring God. That's a slap in God's face. It's like you are spitting in God's face. That's how God looks at that. And then he gives us his only son. His life so our lives can be saved. Our souls can be saved. So that we can be blessed. So that we can cry out to an almighty God and be delivered and be healed. So that we can cast out demons in his name. He gives his son. His son gives his blood. And then we refuse to believe or trust in him. That's a shame. Numbers chapter 21 is... The children of Israel doing the same thing. Then the people of Israel, chapter 21, starting at the fourth verse. Then the people of Israel set out from Mount Hor, taking the road to the Red Sea. They didn't, they didn't want to go into the land. Because they were afraid that God would not protect them. That God would not give them the victory. And God had been giving them the victory all the way up. To the borders. To the edge of the promised land. So they just spit in God's face. And God says you're not going into the land. So now God has given them. 40 years in the wilderness. Something else happens. Chapter 21. Look at the fourth verse. 
Then the people of Israel set out from Mount Hor, taking the road to the Red Sea, to go around the land of Edom. But the people grew impatient with the long journey. And they began to speak against God and Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness? They complain. There is nothing to eat here and nothing to drink. And we hate this horrible manna. They hate the bread of heaven. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 6 says, so the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people and many were bitten and died. Then the people came to Moses and cried out, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord told him, make a replica of a poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. Ain't that something? Look at this test of faith right here. God wants Moses to make a replica of a snake. Make a snake. Put it on a pole. And tell the people to look at it. And if they look at it. Just simply look at it. All who are bitten. Will live. The title of this message is Snakes in the Camp. Hard lesson of faith. It's a shame. This is what they got to do now. Uh, you didn't want to you didn't want to trust God when he brought you through the Red Sea. You didn't want to trust God when he brought you out of Egypt. Amen. You, you, you didn't want to trust God. You didn't want to believe in God. Wow. Now you're going to have to look at a replica of a snake on a pole in order, if you've been bitten by this poisonous snake, if you want to live, you got to look at this snake that Moses made and stuck on the pole. That's a shame. Mm -mm -mm. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and be healed. Anybody could look at the, whoever been bitten, anybody could look at this bronze snake and be healed. Now, let me tell you something. That's hard to believe. That just by looking at this picture, this image of this snake, that you are going to be healed. But why did God do that? Because God is teaching them about faith. God is teaching them how to live by faith. That's why he had them look at this snake on a pole. Title of this message was Snakes in the Camp, A Hard Lesson of Faith. Let me tell you something. I brought this message today because a lot of you are not living by faith and you don't understand what's going on in your lives. I understand this. God sent his son. To lay down his life. To shed his blood. To die. So that you and I. Can be reconciled back to the father. And live as his people. And honor him. And worship him. He 
he did this because he said, we are to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, mind, and soul, and our neighbors as ourselves, and we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not living by faith. We're not obeying God. We're not trusting God. We are living just like the children of Israel when God brought them out of Egypt, the place of slavery. God has healed us and delivered us and saved us from the lake of fire. But we want to turn up. We want to get high. We want to drink. We hate our parents. We hate our sons and daughters. We hate people. We don't love nobody. We find it very hard to forgive one another. When God told them to go into the land. And see what's going on in the land. And spy the land out and come back and give him a good report about the land. Because God knew the land was good. When God told you to love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, and soul, and strength. When God told you to love your neighbor as yourself. When God told you to forgive. And if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. It's the same thing as God telling you to go into the land. And a lot of us have come back from where God sent us. I, I told you, I sent you to forgive. I sent you to love and you came back with a bad report. And you're wondering why you can't get blessed. I sent you to forgive. I sent you to love. I sent you to restore that sinner back to me gently. I sent you to honor your mother and father. I sent you to love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And you came back with a blunt. You came back drunk. You came back fornicating. You came back with a lustful spirit. You came back with strange fire. So what does God say? He says that liars, murderers, and adulterers, the sexual immoral, cowards, will not enter the kingdom of heaven. God has called you, he has qualified you, and he has sent you. What are you bringing back to the Lord? What are you bringing back? Are you going to bring back a good report? Or are you bringing back a bad report? You're going around telling people, don't forgive nobody. Don't forgive your enemy. There are people's heart that are so hard that would tell you, child of God, don't love your enemy and don't forgive your enemy when God told you to. Snakes in the camp. A hard lesson of faith. Let me tell you something right now. The snakes were already in the camp. I'm talking to somebody. There are snakes already in your house. And the only reason why they haven't bitten you yet is because God has protection over you. Soon as you decide to live without faith, God will remove his protection from you. And the snakes that are in your house, the snakes that are in your camp will bite you. And you will not live. You will die. That's right. The snakes are already in the camp. 
The snakes are already around you. But God says, I have given you authority and power to trample on scorpions and snakes. Did he not? Brothers and sisters, I got to let you go. I just want you to know this message was about a faith walk. A life of faith. Are you living a life of faith? Are you trusting and believing God? Or when yo when you get laid off and your rent's due and your car broke down and you got to catch the bus and you have just very little food. And your wife is acting the fool. And your husband's acting the fool. And your children's acting the fool. Your family's standing against you. What are you going to do? Are you going to trust God? Or are you going to act just like the children of Israel did when they came out of Egypt? I wish I ain't never had married him. I wish I ain't never married her. I wish they were never my parents. I wish these children were never mine. Oh, that's how you act when you don't have no faith. But God's been watching over you and taking care of you and blessing you. And God is listening to your complaints. He's listening to your murmurs and he's listening to your complaint. And if you don't learn to live by faith, I want you to know this today. The snakes are coming. The snakes are coming. To your camp. This is the true worshiper of God. I love you. Live by faith and not by sight. I'll see you soon.